Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hey, it's Solar Sunday. Uh, you know, trying to get a little bit of stuff ready for this week. I got some good projects coming up again. Sold another big grid tie, got a big off grid, getting ready to do all this stuff. And uh, pretty exciting stuff. The last system that I just posted on uh, YouTube, uh, looks like the Wall Street Journal is going to be throwing a little article about it. So it's going to be pretty exciting for me. Worked pretty hard for that. Uh, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about today, uh, just this week I saw a few videos where people were doing uh, MC4 connectors and uh, they were using just a standard automotive crimper and then trying to solder them in there to get them to hold better and uh, that kind of kind of freaks me out because people were having problems. Uh, these were ground fault and other issues where you know they were getting corrected and I just wanted to iterate to people that you know there's a proper UL listed cable out there and, and for good measures. I mean, when we look at the evolution of solar cables, you know, our first one that we had was MC3 with the boots. Uh, those started blowing apart with any kind of resistance or any looseness in the connectors because of the high voltage. Um, and they were also sucking water in because the magnetic field of the high voltage DC was different. So they were getting like a wicking. They were seeing lots of issues with them. Um, the MC4 is a great connector, but it needs to be done right. And uh, while I commend everybody out there, you know, trying to make stuff work, there's certain things with these systems, um, especially when we're running grid tie systems, you know, 450 volt operating, um, you know, in, in that range, we want to make sure that these cables are safe. Resistance is the killer. Um, and so what I wanted to show you guys was the, the way that I make them. Um, I have the correct tool for it. I don't expect everybody uh, that they're going to go out and buy a $600 tool to crimp these connectors. There might be cheaper ones. Uh, I use the Reinstock tool so I can do the old MC3s, the MC4s, I don't ever do Tycos. Um, I have this tool, I do it for a living. Um, but you can get these cables readily available from any solar hardware place. I buy everything from Wholesale Solar up in Mount Shasta, California. Uh, my favorite place to buy everything, I'll put the link right here, how's that? Um, and you guys can go right to Wholesale Solar. Uh, anybody there is going to be able to help you, they're all great people. It's where I've bought every system now for the last four or five years, and uh, they can help you out to sell you these cables to keep stuff safe. They'll make custom cables, they'll give you 100 foot cables, they'll give you any kind of pre-made UL listed cable that you need to keep your project safe. So um, let's, uh, let's take a look. I'm going to set this up in the bench. Uh, we're going to do a little crimp action, uh, put one together, and then we're going to see how hard we can pull on it to make one of these pop apart. Hold on. It's a full cycle crimper, making meaning it has to make a full compression before it'll release. So you can see if we just go a little in a little ways, we get a few clicks and it stops. You actually have to take this one and bottom it all the way out before it'll spring back and allow you to do a full crimp. Also, if we look at here on the teeth, we can see that um, it's got little bevels on there that causes it to fold the, the crimper over. That's one of the main things I think that's really different about this. It actually rounds the, the piece over. When we look at the the male and the female connectors here that we're dealing with, we can see that we don't really have to strip much. You know, we're looking at, you know, just under a quarter inch right here of, of what we need to strip off the wire. We don't want it to go too far because we don't want it to go back into this piece because when these things snap together and push in, we can see that these things are going to go together a little ways. If you run that wire too far in there, it's going to block it. And that's part of the thing too that, that's kind of concerning me uh, about when I'm seeing people solder these is that um, I'm seeing people run this thing up here quite a ways and getting a big glob of solder on here. And when you go to insert this thing and get the wire in there, this thing has to click. And if this doesn't go all, all the way up in there and actually click into place, then we're going to have issues with the connection. And that's where I think we're going to start seeing ground faults and fires and, and things really start to have problems with these, you know, these types of ends that aren't done properly. So um, the other thing is, is there's... There's two different types of wire that we're dealing with. Uh, right here, uh, for this one, this is gonna actually be the PV wire. Um, it has a thicker jacket. Um, this, act this actual PV wire right here actually has a, an interior jacket and an exterior, which gives it a little better, uh, little better performance. This is 10 gauge Falcon uh, PV wire. Uh, this other wire that we have right here is just the standard USC2 PV wire. This stuff's only rated for 600 volts. Uh, it is sunlight resistance, but one of the things to to be careful f of is when you're ordering when you're ordering the MC4s, there is two different barrel sizes, and you have to be careful because the the PV wire requires a big gland. If you can see down in there, 
and the actual USC 2 has a much smaller bland size. So you got to make sure that when you're ordering these, um, if you're going to be making your own, try to get the right gland. It makes a big difference because if you're using the, the USC 2 wire um, with the PV connector, it's just not going to seal up and uh, you're going to get water and moisture in there, which is really bad for these. So uh, to do one of these cables, uh, let's see, let's just use the USC. We'll start with that. It's really pretty easy to do these. All we're going to do is uh, come in. I like these little ratcheting little strippers the best for what we're going to do. We're going to come in and just pop the tip of it off. Again, we don't need much. We're going to lift the gate on our Reinstag tool, slip our little piece in the, the crimper. I like to just give a little pre-crimp uh, so it gets it going on those rounds well. And then we're just going to push it up to the gate, do our full cycle crimp, give it a nice little ratchet. we got to lift the gate again to pop it out. And we can see in there that how it's folding that over. Um, if you're going to use regular automotive crimps, it's not going to give it that same roll and crimp at the same time. Another thing to look at is it really flattens the back of it out, if we can see that. So we know that that thing is really compressing. And there's also, um, on these tools, there is different holes for different millimeters of the connector. We're running the 6.0 right now. So, All right, so here we are, we're back here. I have myself a little technical issue I had to fix here. But uh, we're going to use a couple pair of alignments. And I'm just going to hold the wire and start showing you know if, if this thing wasn't on here we can't pull this out that connector is not loose I mean it takes a lot of force for me to be able to rip that I mean I'm I'm pulling on that thing pretty good and it's not coming off so that's that they really need to be crimped with a proper tool to make these right I mean you can solder them if you want to but for the little extra you know money of spending you know to get the the right cables definitely gonna make a safer project so just wanted to show this to you guys, what the crimp really looks like, what the tool's like, tell you where you could get them, so that way uh, maybe save somebody some headaches. So thanks for watching my little cable demonstration. Talk to you guys soon.